Here. 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 Conflict report. Approval of minutes uh, being May 7, 2015. Second. Motion, second, all in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item A, change order number three from First Group Engineering Inc. for the Wolf Lake Forest Trail submitted for approval. Foresight sale. Yes. This, this is an actual decrease of $8,320.34. It will finally complete the Wolf Lake tra Trail under the Indiana Toll Road. Everybody is in agreement that, that this will work. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve the change order. Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item B. Grant agreement with the State of Indiana Department of Natural Resources, Division of Forestry, submitted for approval. This is for tree planting. Uh, we've lost a lot of trees in our parks, and this will give us an opportunity to plant some of those trees. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the grant agreement. Motion, second. All those in favor? I have it. Item C, request for advertising date May 21st, 2015 and May 28th, 2015 with a mid opening date of June 11th, 2015 for the 6th District Project Lighting Project on Hampshire Avenue from 167th Street to 167th Street and 165th Street from Nevada Avenue to New Hampshire Avenue. I'd like to make a motion that we set those uh, Advertising and bid dates. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item D. Be the temporary <coughs> with NH Vegas LLC for reconstruction of Fifth Avenue submitted for approval. This is for a temporary <coughs> by, this is for a temporary bypass road while they're reconstructing Fifth Avenue. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve the easement. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item E. Temporary resident only parking designation in the Water Garden, 120th Street to 115th Street, Calumet Avenue to Carolina Avenue, along with streets from 122nd Street to Railroad Avenue, Calumet Avenue to Atchison, effective July 15, 2015 through July 19, 2015, submitted for approval. This is for Festival of the Lake. I'd like to make a motion that we approve those temporary Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? I have it. Item F. Correspondence received from Fire Chief Jeffrey Smith requesting promotion from Val Gonzalez from Probationary Firefighter to EMT2 submitted for approval. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the Chief's request. Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. I have it. Item G. Correspondence received from Fire Chief Jeffrey Smith advising of the retirement from of the retirement for Captain John Zoranovich, effective May 12, 2015, submitted for approval. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the chief's letter. Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item H. <clears throat> Correspondence received from Chief of Police John Doty requesting the approval for, for the promotions of officers Donald Connor and Richard Simpson to the rank of sergeant as of April 20th, 2015, submitted for approval. To make a motion to approve Chief, Chief Doty's request. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. <clears throat> Item I, correspondence received requesting $5,000 of the first district gaming money to be transferred for professional engineering services and $12,000 of the first district gaming money be transferred to the 2015 sidewalk I'd like to make a motion that we approve those transfers. Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, seven. Item J, recommendations for acceptance of bids from Clark Inc. for the second district street lighting improvements for approval. Motion for Clark Inc. recommends that we make the award for the second district project to TGB Un Unlimited doing business as Bancroft Electric. I'd like to make a motion that we concur with their recommendation. Second. They are the low bidder. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, have it. Item A. <coughs> Correspondence received from Director of Public Works, Gary Gleason, indicating that a no turn on red sign at 169th and Parish and a four way stop sign at 167th and Parish are not warranted. I'd like to make a motion that we concur with 
Gary's recommendation. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item L. Notice of hearing on property located at 6609 Jefferson. Uh, Mr. President, it doesn't appear that Mr. Boss here is fine to hear yet. I don't know how long the board wants to wait, uh, but rather than start and start over when he does arrive, perhaps we could do, do a couple of the run of registrations and then come back to L. We can do that. Okay, if the board, if the board wishes, if the board doesn't wish, please do what you like. Um, we, motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Sabbath. We'll be back to item L. Item M, rental registration hearing for property located at 1466 Truman, 1466 Truman. Uh, Mr. President, for this one I have that they owe for 2014 only and had previously registered on time every other year. Okay. How, um, how long have we owned the property? Since about 18 years. 18? Mm-hmm. I'd like to make a motion to waive the late fee that will be registered at the $80 for 14. Motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Sabbath. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, ma'am, you can pay today after the meeting or they'll mail you something, but you have 30 days to pay it. All right. Thank you. Rental registration hearing for property located at 6313 Blaine Avenue. 6613 Blaine. Mr. President, I have just that they open 2014. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, is it a single family? Yes. Single family. How long have you owned it? Since 94, 95. I'd like to make, I'd like to make a motion to waive the late fee, but the unit must be registered at the $80. Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, sir. Um, you have, after the meeting, you can wait for it, and the young lady will get you the paperwork to pay it today, or they'll mail you something in the mail, and you have 30 days to pay it. Okay. Since you live in Tennessee, you might want to stick around. <laughs> Ten-hour drive up? Yeah. Item O. <clears throat> Ronald registration hearing for the property located at 824 Willow Court. 824 Willow Court. I have to report that this is actually a problem property. Uh, we had issues with it being marked uninhabitable. Uh, we had issues with property managers not responding to calls. We had issues with ex tenants stealing things from the property and suspicious activity resulting in police calls. Nobody's actually here for this property, so I would ask that you deny the appeal on the ground that nobody is here to prosecute it, and in addition, that it's a problem property. Is it one unit, Chris? I have it being one unit. To make a motion to assess the $500 late fee plus the $80 per unit. Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Sabbath. Item C, rental registration hearing for the property located at 3403 163rd Street. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. President, I just want to, um, I, yeah. I, I, my, my information is that he only took ownership of it after April 15th. He didn't own it until June, so therefore, Registered by is it uh, single family, sir? Yes. I'm here as an interpreter for her. My name is Manny Lopez. Okay. I'm the one that sold the property. And I got the HUD single property. She closed on the property on June 27th. And they worked at the house, needed a lot of work, so they repaired it. It wasn't ready till uh, the following year. So in March of uh, this year, she registered, paid for the rental. And then she was uh, called and said that she owed a couple of years on that, so she just she just started renting it this April. Okay, is it registered for 15? Uh, in, uh, March. She registered in March. Okay, so it is registered. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion. It doesn't appear now, sir. Before you sold it to her, were you renting it to anybody? No, no, the, the house was vacant. It's a bank-owned property. All right, then I would indicate that no rental was required in 2014. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to do that. Motion. Okay, that we're done. All in favor? <coughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Item Q, Ronald Registration Hearing for Property located at 829 Truman Street. 829 Truman. Melinda? Mr. President, on this one, I have uh, issues with this one. Uh, there's been a lot of fighting, a lot of people outside being drunk, battery on a minor. 
of people fighting something coming in through the windows and creating intimidation. Uh, I would say that based on the police calls to the property and the fact that no one has appeared to prosecute this appeal, we deny the appeal. Motion? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item R, rental registration hearing for property located at 225 Kenwood. 225 Kenwood, yes ma'am. Mr. President, the only thing I have for this one is that she owes it 2014 only. I attribute it to old age. Forgot. I'd like to make a motion to waive the late fee, but the unit must be registered at the 80 dollars Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. you can wait till after the meeting and she'll get you the paperwork. You can pay it today. They'll mail you something and you have 30 days to pay it. I will, I'll, have, I'll wait till the mail. Thank you. Thank you. Item F, rental registration hearing for the property located at 7420 Grand Avenue, 7420 Grand. Rimmer? 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 Mr. President, I have to be going to see. 2008, they were late in 10, they were late in 12, and they didn't register in 14. I would add that they have some failure to appear and the previous rental uh, issues that we would deny the appeal. One unit, please. Second, sir. I can make a motion to assess the late fee on the $80 per unit, please. Motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Item C. Council registration hearing for the property located at 5438 Moldsberger Place. Mr. President, I have been registered on time every year prior to 14. This is for 14, right? And it's two units? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 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 Do I explain why I didn't pay no, no, that? No, no, no. I just use it on time every year except last year, and it would just be $80 for one unit if you want to grant the appeal. I'd like to make a motion to waive the late fee, but the unit must be registered at the $80. Motion? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye, have it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. You can pay it today after the meeting to get the paperwork, or we'll mail you something, and you've got 30 days to pay it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have some additional <coughs> rental registrations that are on the agenda. Uh, the first one is, is, uh, is Mr. Brian Nelson here? Yes. What's the address of the property? 726 Spruce. 726 Spruce. Do you have information on that, Chris? Nothing. I didn't know it was on the agenda, sorry. Mr. Nelson, what's your first name? Brian. I've always registered it. I put it up. It was vacant, and I put it up for sale and tried all year to sell it without the ability. I thought I had it sold near the end of the year, and this year I put another tenant in there, and I re-registered it. Okay, so did you rent it at all in 14? No. Okay, then I would just show that the appeal is granted. No registration was required. If that ever happens again, just let me let us know. I did. I signed the paper saying that it wasn't. Did you have David? Yeah. Okay, when did you sign it? Last year or this year? Last year, when I wasn't going to register it. But I never. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to dismiss action. Motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. Thank you. Next is 7132 Madison. Good morning. Good morning. State your name. Marie Groshka. I guess I forgot. I was just shocked when I got the letter. I didn't. I didn't know. How long have you owned the property now? Uh, we moved in in 1960 and it was already grandfathered in. Oh, and you live across the street? I live, I live in the main floor. This is an apartment upstairs. I'd like to make a motion to waive the late fee, but the unit must be registered. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, this is 726 Bruce. That's Brian Nelson. Yes, you'll get a woman in the mail. 
That's already taken care of. So the last one is uh, 6341 Blaine. No, we didn't. We did 6313. Come here from Blaine. 6341 Blaine. Nancy Lee Williams. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Cabot. <clears throat> Item U, specific finding of facts and decisions for the property located at 3915 Poles, submitted for approval. I would only ask that the board approve this, Your Honor. Move. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Cabot. Item B. Agreement to rehab property located at 1033 Spruce Street, submitted for approval. Mr. President, this is the property that was on the demolition list. The owner has entered into agreement to rehabilitate, and I would ask the board to approve it. So moved. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item W. Agreement to rehab property located at 3306 of 165th Street, submitted for approval. I would just ask this is another demolition property. I would ask that the board approve it. So moved. Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Tabby. Aye. Item X. There's one additional agreement to rehabilitate that didn't make the agenda. 7404 Beach. Seventy four oh four Beach, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, 7404 okay. Beach. You just handed it to us. Oh, I'm sorry. That's in the that's um County Driscoll was just here. There's also another agreement to rehabilitate a property that's on the demolition list. I would just ask that the board sign it so I can get County Driscoll to copy. So it's been approved, or you want us to approve it? No, I would like you to please approve it, sign it, and then I will mail it. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the agreement to rehab 7404 Beach. Second. Motion second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item X, correspondence received from Leon Wallach requesting road closures and traffic restrictions for Leon Triathlon on Sunday, June 7, 2015, submitted for approval. Do you need to refer this to court? I already talked to Jill. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item Y, correspondence received requesting rental registration hearing. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. <clears throat> Garage sale permit submitted for approval. Ooh. I've got one. I'd like to make a motion to approve this. Hmm. Garage sale permit. Let's make a motion to approve, approve them all. Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item AA, correspondence received from Adrian and Gary Thompson requesting residential parking on the 1200 block of 171st Place. Can we refer that to? Okay. I'd like to make a motion that Deputy referred to Gary Gleason for recommendation. Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Sabbath. Item DB, acknowledge receipt of replat of lot one, new Roby addition to the city of Hammond. So noted. Yeah, that that we just need to acknowledge receipt of. That's the subdivision plan for the development up by the Walmart. So motion to acknowledge or whatever. 
Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item CC, request to use public right of way for business grand opening at 5670 Holman Avenue. I spoke to the property owner. All they're going to need is they're going to be on the sidewalk. They're going to have a uh, video game truck parked at the curb. It's going to have entrance only off the sidewalk side. They're going to be serving some food out there. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion that we approve the grand opening event. Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. President, I would ask now that we go back to all the regular order of business. Motion. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item L. Notice the hearing on property located at 6609 Jefferson. Mr. President, my name is John McCrum. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Icorn and Icorn and Hammond and with my colleague Ryan Anderson and I being assigned a defense of an action brought by the property owner at 6609 Jefferson, a matter that's currently pending. Uh, Ms. Cantor asked that uh, we present evidence to the board in regard to uh, some of the notice of violations that were identified in an inspection that was made by the Code Enforcement Division for the City of Hammond on the 15th of March 2013. Uh, I would note for the record that uh, Mr. Andrade is represented by counsel. His counsel is Curtis Vosti, also of Hammond. Uh, there were communications that were made by Mr. Anderson and by Ms. Cantor with Mr. Vosti regarding the fact that we were going forward today. And for the record, I will let them speak as those communications before we proceed any further, if that's acceptable to the board. Yes, Mr. President, I believe this matter was set for some time in June, and then the city inspections department changed their mind, and they said we need to get this moving, and that's why we requested the board to reset the hearing for today. I informed Mr. Vossi that he had two choices, to either go on the original hearing date of the 7th a week ago or today on the 14th. Um, he had indicated the reason why I gave him two choices because he said he absolutely can't do it on the 14th. And I said, well, the only other option is the 7th. Um, he then said that I basically had no standing to talk to him about this issue. And then he said he would talk to the city attorney, Chris Cantar, about the matter. Um, he then talked to Ms. Cantar about the matter. Um, both Mr. McCrum and I were copied on an email in which she informed him that he should be ready to proceed on the 14th. I can't speak to exactly the, the communications he had over the phone with Ms. Cantar. Maybe she can, but. Um, it's very clear that this hearing was reset for today on the 14th, and he's not here. All right, Mr. President, just to make the record clear, uh, Mr. Vossi had sent me an email shortly after Mr. Anderson had had a conversation with him. I didn't actually speak to him on the phone. The hearing was set for the July and the 9th, originally because we were going to try to let the HUD matter uh, resolve itself. However, HUD informed us that it was going to take them at least six months to even look at it, and we figured we didn't want to wait that long. Uh, so that the, the Board of Works received a correspondence a few weeks back indicating that we needed to have the hearing on or before the 14th, which today is the 14th. Mr. Voss had sent me an email saying I thought it was set for July. I said, well, we've turned it over to council now for litigation and we're going to have to do it on the 14th. Uh, he had actually in his email said April the 14th and I'd corrected him and said May the 14th because April the 14th had already passed. We were a week beyond that when he sent the email. So I don't know why he is not here today, but the city is ready to proceed on this action. Uh, we have a court reporter and we're ready to go. I would also note for the record, uh, Mr. President, board members, that this matter uh, has been pending for two years and that it has come up, I believe, on the board's docket several times that has been continued, I think, on more than one occasion. So I wanted to note that for the record. Icorn represents the property owner or the city? Icorn represents the city, sir. Uh, we're asking that we return to a single family home as our permits what, indicate. I mean, what is it now? It's a five unit. The board's copy. File. That is a copy of the file that we've presented to uh, Mr. Vosti uh, and been created some two years ago. 
Pictures indicating no fire separation, some unsafe conditions. Permit history showing as a built as a nine room frame with an additional permit in, I believe, 1947 for a four bedroom addition. At some point, this was converted to five units. First bought it in 1998. This guy's owned it since 98. Yes, uh, Mr. President and uh, members of the board, I do have questions to put directly to Mr. Kearney about his inspection. I'd like that to be a part of the record. Uh, if the board please, I will ask questions of him now. Unless you wish to look further, those will be offered as uh, specific pieces of evidence and identified as such for the record. Why don't you proceed? Thank you. Solemnly swear from the testimony you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole the truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. What is your position with the city of Hammond? I'm the code enforcement commissioner. And in that capacity, uh, uh, what role, Mr. Kearney, if any, do you have in the issuance of citations or notices to violations of the Hammond Housing Code? I'll either issue citations or have issue citations issued, um, depending on outcomes of inspections. How long have you served in that role for the city? Going on 10 years now. And to whom do you report the performance of your work? Jim Callahan, Chief of Inspections. Um, did you, in your position as Code Enforcement Commissioner for the City, inspect the premises of 609 Jefferson in Hammond? I did. Recall the date that took place? I believe it was March 15th, 2013. And before you made that inspection, did you or anybody from the Code Enforcement Division seek the permission or consent of the owner to conduct that inspection? Yes, we did. Inspector Matt Saliga called him and set up the inspection. And Mr. Saliga uh, contacted whom, sir? Uh, Jose Andrade, owner. Who's, who's the owner of the property, 6609 Jefferson? That's correct. And what was his response once that notification was made? Uh, it was almost immediate, immediate. I believe we inspected either the next day or the day after. Well, to be specific, did he give his consent that the inspection take place? Yes, he did. Was he present when you made your inspection of the property? Yes, he was. Can you detail to the board now your observations and findings that you made upon the inspection of the property that day, beginning with the first area that you inspected? We started in the basement area um, of the, for the inspection, noticed several things that were not in accordance with a, a multi-unit. Um, picture shows the uh, chimney chase, uh, basically from the basement floor to the uh, uh, top of the chimney, there's no fire separation, there's no fire blocking. Um, also, there were some electrical issues, um, typically in, a, in construction of a house at this time for a multi-unit, there would be needed a iron support beam or non-combustible beam as along with, along with non-combustible supports. Um, this was all wood. So it was a stick frame construction? That's correct. Does that create any type of hazard in and of itself? Yes, construction at that time would uh, would be a balloon frame construction for a single family home. That would, uh, for a single family home, the fire blocking would not be necessary. Uh, uh, with the chimney, uh, it was evident that there was no fire blocking. Was there an issue with fire separation? And can you explain that? Yeah, fire separation required be a one hour fire rating, something that would take a construction of whatever material that would prevent fire breaking through that separation within a one hour period. So it's a one hour fire rating. Did you or anyone at your direction take pictures of some of these problems that you identified? I directed Matt Sliga to take pictures, correct. All right. I want to show you what's been marked for purposes of identification as exhibits 1A through 1I. May I approach? Walk the board, please, through the pictures identified as exhibits 1A through 1I, and uh, tell them what those pictures represent. 1A is a, a picture of the front of the building, um, which typical is a appears to be a single family home. What about 1D? 
One B, this is a picture of the chimney going up to the roof deck, uh, through the roof deck. Basically daylight was shown through there. There's no fire blocking. If a fire was to get up this chimney, it would um, affect all the uh, uh, apartments, rooms connected to it. Uh, what risk, if any, does that pose to any of the tenants that might be occupying the uh, rentable space of Mr. Andrade's uh, premises? If a fire was to start in that basement or cellar uh, and head up that chimney, basically the second floor would be engulfed probably before the first floor um, without any tenant's knowledge, nothing to prevent them from knowing that there was a fire in the basement. Um, tell us uh, what is shown in uh, picture 1C, exhibit 1C. 1C has several pictures of the different apartments that they were, they were occupied at the time. Um, shown in picture 1D. 1D does have some pictures of the other apartments, um, but in particular the stairs that are created in the back of the building. Um, they do not meet code, uh, no kick plates to prevent tripping. Um, the width is in question as, and as long as, as far as the, uh, and also the handrails and guardrails, there's no uh, four inch fear rule to stop someone from going through those handrails, guardrails. Tell us what is shown in picture 1E. 1E is, uh, again, some more uh, of the apartment's interior. Um, the upper left is a, a door that separates into the hallway. Um, it's not fire rated, just simply a panel door. Uh, also on the middle right is a electrical situation that was concerned. What about picture 1F? 1F in, it shows in, in the middle picture on the first row is a, a support beam for the stairs that are in the back of this building. Um, basically, it looks like the post was in and then cement poured around it. And I believe from freezing and thawing or use that has come out of that mooring, which appears to be about an inch thick. Again, on the, in the middle picture on the second row, you can see that there is, um, the stairs are a hazard considering the openings and gaps uh, in the rails, balusters. Mr. McCrum, I have a question. Kelly, does every one of these five apartments have kitchen and, and, and or bathroom facilities? Yes. Okay. What is shown in uh, picture 1G? 1G is much better in color. The upper left is some sort of support system for the first floor, I assume to prevent sagging. Um, basically, it looks like a four by six on top of a two by four on top of a wood beam. Does that reflect an impaired structural condition? And if so, what would it be? Absolutely. If, as it's placed, if that was to fail, um, obviously room would sag. In a fire, if that was to fail, it could cause the floor to collapse, um, eliminating that support. Also, the Another shot of the chimney. The bottom middle picture is a lolly column support, helping support that first floor. Um, it's not Im embedded into the concrete. It's not a proper use for support. The what if any risk would that pose to tenants living within those premises? Same situation as the um, supports that were put up on the upper left-hand picture and, and to the left of that picture. Um, it could easily be kicked out um, eliminated and cause a sagging and uh, the floor collapse. Uh, do all of these conditions that you've described uh, uh, reflect unsafe building conditions? Yes, they do. As you understand, it would be unsafe uh, within the meaning of the uh, Indiana Unsafe Building Law? That's correct. The upper, yes, go ahead. The upper right hand picture in the, in the first row is a picture of the um, cellar apartment. Uh, ceiling height is six foot four. There's no fire separation between that and the other half of the basement cellar. Um, does the ceiling height present a problem? It certainly does. What? Ceiling height was six four, minimum seven foot. The distance that allows them smoke to build up or an opportunity for someone to get out, the shorter that ceiling, the quicker that smoke's going to build up may overcome them. Did you identify this as an unsafe building condition? Yes, we did. What is shown in Exhibit I? One eye has some electrical issues. Um, 
hard not in, in, in color. Um, electrical issues? Yeah, there's, there's an electrical issue in the, in the right hand picture on the top row. I have a question about 1F. One F, go ahead, sir. Top right hand picture with all the boxes, the electrical boxes? Yes. Um, five units in a, in a cellar would indicate that we need six meters, one for the public area. That would be the owner's responsibility. I didn't look through the permit, but there was never any permit to convert this to a five unit? There appears to be a permit in 2002, although no inspections were ever made. Um, some of those uh, issues that exist, um, I don't believe this would have passed inspection at that time. However, 2002 is before this uh, administration. Uh, but um, getting to the question posed by Chief Smith, uh, the, elect the uh, permit that was pulled for 2002 uh, was for what? An apartment upgrade. Not Single family apartment upgrade? It just says an apartment upgrade. It doesn't specify that it's five unit upgrade. It doesn't specify that it's four. Um, also on that first meter you see in 1F is labeled by the owner or by someone um, other than the city that it's a basement and apartment five, which is the cellar um, apartment. That would have to have been separated. That'd have to have been, again, a separate unit for the, the cellar and a separate meter for that apartment. But there was never, after the fact of all this work being done, there was never an electrical inspection done? No, there's uh, violations that would have been, uh, before it would have been inspected, had been, uh, before it would have passed, it would have had to, some other corrections would have been made. Okay. Is that building currently occupied? Yes. Five times? All the units? Five times. Um, my conversation with NIPSCO, um, tried to make contact yesterday, got a call back this morning, all five meters are energized. Water usage too? Water usage too. Water department has it as a single family home, as being one service, one main one service. How many meters are there uh, currently at the uh, premises? You know? um, water meters or electric? There's five. There's also an additional service that we believe was original service that would have to have been eliminated. You can't have two services to one building. Fire comes in, they want to shut off one meter. Um, it is our belief that that original service, the meter may have been pulled. Um, NIPSCO said they pulled that in November 2002. Um, however, pulling the meter does not mean that that's still not energized, and it's our belief that it is. Uh, Mr. Critty, did you or anyone at your direction issue a notice of violation reflecting your findings? Yes. Detailed violations of Indiana's unsafe building law? Yes, Matt Saliga produced that paperwork. That may be already before the board, but I would like to show you a copy of it. Mark, for purposes of identification, Exhibit 2. Can you say for the record what that is? This is a violation of uh, Housing Building Code, um, Unsafe Building Act, stating the conditions of um, residential and building code that uh, exist. And he did receive all these, right, Mr. Andrade? Yes, several times. Let me return you for the moment to the day of the inspection. How many tenants were occupying 6609 Jefferson when you made that inspection? All units had uh, furniture, dishes, w appeared to be occupied. I believe there's two tenants that were actually visible, that were actually present. And you made this inspection along with uh, other members of the inspection division? Matt Schliegel and, and Jim Callahan. You know what, in what zoning classification the property is located? The zoning currently is R1U, would allow for two units. Um, for example, duplex or two apartments, cash, Correct. something like that? Correct. So how many units were being led to these tenants? Five? All five units were occupied, yes. Including a cellar apartment? Yes. Uh, is there any means of ingress or uh, Firemen beyond a set of stairways leading into the cellar? No. What about egress for the tenant who lives in that cellar apartment? The windows um, that are there are, are not to code for clear opening, um, are too high off the ground. Basically, you wouldn't be able to jump up and pull yourself out of this window. And it is my belief that nor would a fireman with a breathing apparatus be able to get in this window. Do you know whether this property was originally built as a single family dwelling or as a multi unit? Built as a single family family home, it's described in the permit ledgers as a nine-room frame. How many units are 
many rooms is it now? Well, the five apartments is basically roughly 20 rooms. I'm going to show you what's been marked for purposes of identification. It's exhibit 3-1 and exhibit 3-2. Exhibit 3-1 would be all entries, uh, exhibit 3-2 being the ledger that purports to be from 1927. Did you or anyone at your direction examine these ledger books to determine uh, whether this was built as a single family dwelling or as a multiple unit dwelling? Matt Shaliga did that. All right. What findings are reflected in exhibits 3-1 or more specifically exhibit 3-2? 3-2. 3-2. The original address for this property was 1337 Jefferson. Um, we had a transition in, in addresses. Um, so when we go back to something before that transition, we check with the engineer's department who has that crossover. So in finding that it was um, actually at 1337 and it was a nine, nine room frame, frame would cost uh, $4.38, $43 and, and the value 88 grand, 8,000. Um, in 3-1, excuse me, before we're going to 3-1, let me show you 3-2, which I think has a highlighted indication, Correct. Um, perhaps about eight lines down. Correct. Give me just a moment, I'll show you, or if I may, exactly what Is there anything that's demonstrated with the entry that begins F.E. White that tells you whether this was built in a single dwelling? It's stated as a nine room frame, the F standing for frame. Uh, additionally, there's other addresses on Jefferson that are listed the same, five room frame, six room, seven room frame. The garage specifies a four room frame, consistent with single family home. In the ledger books kept by the city, Mr. Kearney, are there references to multi-unit dwellings for the same year as the nine-room frame, that is to say 1927? That is correct. What, what are they designated as? I mean, how are they described? Uh, I'm looking for a specific apartment. Four flat, two flat, Four flat two unit. apartment, um, that's correct. So you reached a conclusion based upon your review of the uh, ledger and your observation of similar residences in and around that uh, block that this was built as a single family dwelling? That's correct. If, um, specifically on 3 1, if you look at the second page on the bottom, uh, 112, uh, built as a two apartment, 10 room. So they're specific when they're issuing these permits and what it's going to be um, apartment. A two flat, multi unit. It's not basically. It's it's descriptive of what what was being built. Whether it was built as a multiple unit dwelling or as a single family dwelling, does that matter in terms of what it's being used as now for purposes of the Indiana Unsafe Building Law? Yes, it does. Explain your answer. A home is designed in for a particular use type group. Um, my belief is this building is being used as a, a type in a group that it was not meant to be. So the codes that would have applied at the time or that are um, pertinent to the Unsafe Building Act are, are violations. It's, it, this is an unsafe building. Did you find the adverse conditions that you found and the impaired structure conditions that you found to be violative of the Indiana Unsafe Building Law in March of 2013? Yes, I did. Based upon what you know about its current use, does it remain so today? Yes, it does. Um, if uh, this was in fact built as a multi-unit dwelling, or its original use was a multi-unit dwelling, um, are there structural components that are lacking? Let's assume for the moment that Mr. Andrade's assertion about this multiple unit being multiple unit dwelling being built that way. Uh, for the sake of argument, is correct. Are there problems with it if, in fact, it is a multi-unit dwelling? Yes, it, uh, steel support beam or a non-combustible support beam would have been required as, as um, in the basement underneath the floors, basically, and also non-combustible supports for that beam. 
Um, the intent is to stop the force from in, in a fire or from use weight from falling into the cellar. I think this question was already raised by the board, but do you know whether Mr. Andrade has had any permits, had any permits pulled by contractors to correct any of the problems that we've identified thus far? No permits pulled. And you said that based upon a conversation you had with NIPS, there were multiple electric meters that show active energy use. That's correct. This morning I talked with Adrian from NIPSCO and she said that all five meters are charged in use. Um, you indicated that there was a cellar apartment that was in use at the time? Correct. And there was a cellar apartment that was in use today? It is my belief, but I have not been back in the building. Is that a violation of the Hammond Municipal or Building Code? Yes, it is. Is it uh, an unsafe condition that would be violative of the Indiana Unsafe Building Law? Absolutely. Why are such units not allowed uh, for lease tenants in the city of Hammond? The ordinance for city of Hammond is no sellers can be used as habitable space. Cellar being that more than half of finished floor to ceiling is below grade, a basement being where more than half is above grade. It, it is defined as a cellar. Does the absence of fire resistant rated separation create an unsafe condition within the premises? Absolutely. Can you explain that? The one hour fire rating, if, if the basement apartment, for example, was to be on fire, there's not a fire rating between that and the apartment above it. So if it burns through, um, it is putting the people in that apartment above it at risk, um, not being able to, to stop that, have that one hour fire rating. Also, I believe the balloon frame construction would lead to the fire shooting up those balloon frame studs, no fire blocking would be up in the attic and, and we'd have both floors engulfed before uh, anyone would have a reasonable amount of time to get out. What must, what must Mr. Andrade do to create proper fire separation between the various units he's leased and he's leasing now to tenants? In a, with, with five units, a contractor would be required to come in and establish what exactly needs to be done. And to establish the one hour fire separation, um, the bigger concern would be fire blocking. Um, it, it, it's not there. It would have to be installed. Um, I, it was my belief that walls would have to be opened up to create that fire blocking. Um, but it's hard to define exactly what needs to be done without exploratory and um, a contractor would be need to acquire that. Kelly, I have a question. In your, you've been doing this a long time. There's probably no way place could be converted into a five unit by doing all the if they had if the proper stuff could be done well especially the base at this point I don't believe zoning would even allow it so but if you had went to the BZA got an appeal um, turn it into a five unit. it would it would be very costly almost uh, in a, in a cost effective I don't think it would um, be worth the money put into I don't I don't believe it would be possible no Complete your discussion regarding what you observed when you were there for inspection on the 15th of March of 2013. Can you tell the board briefly the issues identified uh, by you regarding the second floor apartments? Second floor apartments, um, primarily the main entrance, uh, the doors across from each other with the landing, the improper landing, um, were just panel doors. So in that main stairway through that front door, um, you have no fire separation between these buildings if there's a, between these apartments. If there's a fire to start there, they do not have a necessary door that would um, prevent a fire block. In each of these, these apartments, there's only one way out? There's no rear entrance for all five, all four of them? Or there's a rear entrance on the, on the back stairs. There's a rear, rear, each apartment? rear exit. Yes. But again, the stairs aren't to code or are unsafe. So How are the stairs not to code? Um, the, there's no footings for the supports. Um, the one picture shows that the footing came out. It looks like the concrete was poured around it. That was just sitting on concrete. It's not a support. It's not protected from a freeze thaw, and I believe that's why it, it popped out. Also, steps, there's no kick plates on the steps, creating a tripping hazard for not just for the people that may be coming out, but also the first responders that may be going in. What are the issues or problems identified in your notice regarding uh, the first floor part for 6609 Jefferson? Typically the same situation. Uh, it, it, again, it's a matter of fire separation, um, no fire rated doors, the egress off the, the back stairs, um, the apartment on the first floor is, is just is, is much jeopardy as the apartment on the second floor. So if unrepaired or uncorrected by the owner, what sort of hazard will this present? 
back to the town? My belief is it's a fire trap, um, not only for the tenants, but also first responders, um, tender frame construction, stick frame construction. Um, this is something that would probably go up in a hurry. Uh, Mr. Trini, is there any evidence to show that the property was at any time lawfully converted to a multiple unit dwelling? No, the original permit, as I stated, was a, a nine room frame. Um, and I believe it was in 1947. There was a permit that was for a four bedroom addition. And specifically spelled out in the code in the ledger as a four B D R M A D D T four room addition four bedroom addition. I don't believe there's any way you can interpret that to be a four apartments or uh, additional units. Are there any records in the city of Hammond zoning of any variance or any conditional use permit? No, there's not. Being sought by Mr. Andrade or issued to him to allow him to rent out more than two units of the 609 Jefferson property? No, there's not. So to meet the Hampton Building Code requirements uh, and a structurally correct premises so as to remove the hazard permit in violation of the unsafe building law, what must Mr. Andrade do to more specifically address each of those questions? Um, there is. It, it, it would be hard to say what, what would be necessary without opening walls and establishing that it is, as a commercial building, as a five unit, the IBC code would come into play. Um, egress issues with the doors, the rear um, staircase, uh, all that would have to be addressed. And the fire blocking that would be necessary in the chimney and, and in the other areas. Um, I venture to say it, it may even need to be sprinkled, but I speculate. What permits would have to be pulled to achieve compliance? Electrical? Electrical would have to be checked because electrical that's installed was never inspected. Plumbing, um, again, there's no permits for the plumbing. Um, we don't know if that was installed correctly. Ventilation problems can lead to sewer gas backup. Space surrounding the chimney chase going from the floor to uh, basement floor to or cellar floor to uh, roof? Would have to be fire blocked and caulked, fire caulked. Stairs in the cellar? Yes, uh, egress issues um, into the cellar um, with the door um, fire rated. Now, to be clear, this would uh, be applicable if, in fact, um, this was a, a multiple dwelling unit as opposed to a single family home? Correct. But based upon your inspection, uh, your review of the ledgers within the city of Hammond, and what you observed on March 15th, 2013. Um, how is this property being used? It's being used as a multi-unit, um, but there's no doubt in my mind it was built as a single family home. So as code enforcement commissioner, what are you asking this board to do? Asking to have this house converted back to a single family home. The basement apartment eliminated. Um, well, is there only one exit out of the best uh, basement? I believe there's two, but both have egress issues. They would not meet current code. I have no further questions. And I have no further witnesses on behalf of the city. How many gas meters are there? Six. Is it, is it separate heating units for everything, or is it? No, it's a, it's a boiler system. Boiler system for the whole building, and there's gas separate for cooking. Right? Cooking, correct. Um, Chris, you don't have anything? You can't say anything. I'd like to make a motion that we take this under advisement and we'll issue a fax within two weeks. Motion. Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Captain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item five, matters from any board members? No. Item six, matters from any department heads or the representatives? We misunderstood the board last time. We had a, supposed to have a hearing for 70, 26 Osborne last week. I think we had, originally we had a schedule for the uh, 16th. We asked for a couple weeks, we got the 7th of uh, May. We can just 
reschedule it for 30 days. We're working with the property owner and his council. June 11th. That works. Motion. Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any other department heads or the representative wish to address the board? <clears throat> Any new business? Any old business? Meeting is now open to the public. Anyone from the public wish to address the board? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dana Houston. I called maybe about a week ago. They told me to come to the council meeting. I work for White's Residential and Family Services in Crown Point, and our main office is in Wabash. What I'm here for is because I wanted to get permission to put up maybe about 10 or 12 signs in high traffic areas for about 30 days in Hammond and then come and remove them to advertise for foster care because it's a great need for foster care, um, foster homes in Lake County. Now I see a lot of signs up from other agencies and I don't know how that works, but I was coming to ask permission in order for our agency to be able to put them up. Where do you see these signs, the signs you're talking about that you see, where are they located? In various locations all around Lake County, Indiana, Gary, Mirrorville, Hammond. Um, I mean, well, that's what I'm asking in Hammond. I mean, are, are they in front of resident homes or are they on no. property? No, just city property. You know, that's what I mean, I, the address is because really they're not supposed to be up there anyway. Mr. President, we don't allow any signs in the public right away because it is a vision issue for people who are driving. And when the street department does see a sign that's in the city parkway, they take it. And, they and I know they put them down by 94, but that's state property. Right, they just, state property. They we just plop no them in there. But the street department does the them off the city property and takes them over to Hockey Street to wait for the owner to come pick them up. If they don't pick them up, they destroy them. Mm -hmm. Now, if anybody wants to put a sign up <coughs> private property with the owner's consent, then of course, just have to meet with the zoning complaint. This is an issue that I've had several problems with um, and been in front of Judge Harkin with. Um, usually when I see a sign, I'll call them them to pick up their, their signs. If I see any left over, I, I will ask the judge, my fellow judge, I will ask the judge for a $500 fine for a sign. It's something that just litters neighborhoods at a, at a time. Okay. We wish we could help you out, but it be a violation of city ordinances, so. Okay. Um, it's been, yeah, that's, it, that's been a city ordinance for years. Okay. If we didn't have an ordinance, believe me, it'd be like a Las Vegas down in Cayman Avenue somewhere. <laughs> Okay. Signs all over the and place. And once again, if you can get a private property owner to allow you to put the sign on their property. On their property. Okay. You still need to meet the zoning requirements. Well, I'm thinking commercial. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to address the board? Motion to adjourn. Motion, second, all those in favor, aye. aye seven.